Hello, I'm Dr. Robert Kaufman, and we're about to go beyond the terminus. You're considering referral to an endodontist. What do you want back? The question may seem silly, but it, actually it isn't. Endodontic treatment can be finished in one of several ways. Firstly, the access is minimal, such as in a virgin anterior tooth that's been traumatized and requires endo. After the endo is completed, a natural sequence of events is to complete the coronal seal at the time of the endodontics, usually consisting of some type of bonded composite restoration. The tooth or restoration is etched, and usually an orifice bond, foldable composite material, is placed over the gutta percha, followed by a second layer of more aesthetic composite to close the access. In the second case, the tooth may be a bit more broken down and have a proximal surface or two that needs restoration with core material prior to preparation for full cuspal coverage. Some referring dentists wish to reevaluate the remaining tooth structure themselves prior to preparation of the tooth for restoration. For example, they'll prep the tooth, remove weak cusps, and then place the core. They prefer that I not place the core for them. Most modern endodontic practices are trying to move the referrals toward having them place the cores immediately after the completion of the endodontics. Each geographic location has its preferred tendencies according to the history of the referral relationships between endodontists and the referring dentists. In my particular situation, endodontists are restricted to the specialty and it has become very difficult over the past few years to try to convince our referring general dentists to have us do this because they see our practices as being restricted. Hopefully within the next year or so, that will all change and our general practice credentials will be restored. In the case of posterior teeth that they wish me to temporize, an orifice bond material is placed over the gutta percha to start. I like to use ultra-dense permaflow purple. The purple color has two purposes. Firstly, it tells me that I treated the case because there are very few other endodontists where I live that use this material. And secondly, it's a stop sign for my referrals. In the event that they need to make a post space, for example, they remove the purple until they find the orifice gutta percha. There's less chance of the dentist perforating the treated case when I use such a bright contrasting color rather than a tooth colored material. When a post space is requested, it's measured, noted in the report, and a calcium hydroxide paste is placed in the post space to aid with asepsis in between appointments. I prefer to use sponges as a spacer and use a bonded core paste as a temporary. Maybe overkill and expensive, but has a higher compressive strength than IRM and it seems to work well in combination with the orifice bond to seal canals from the oral environment. It's not perfect and it can leak as well, but hopefully before then the tooth will have been permanently restored. The blue color also serves to indicate to the patient and the referral that the restoration is not permanent. This may be thought of as an extravagant, expensive temp material, considering that it's likely that the material that I placed will be removed. However, after almost 40 years of practice, I know how patients sometimes disappear before they get around to having the final restoration placed, and this is a good policy. Unfortunately, some cases return for recall with the sponges still in the access. The referring dentist saw the blue composite material and incorrectly assumed that the final core had been placed. I know there's a tendency to give the post-op endo reports only a cursory glance before they're filed in the patient's chart. But when restoration of the tooth is indicated, make sure to read the report thoroughly so that this mistake doesn't happen. It's very frustrating to work hard to endo treat and seal a tooth, only to have it return on recall with a submitted crown over what is essentially a gigantic void in the access. Since crowns can leak over time, this is a potential vector for long-term canal recontamination and endo failure even with an orifice bond. In the ideal situation, the endodontic treatment is completed and the core buildup is placed by the clinician, the endodontist, under rubber dam in a sterile environment. The material of choice of the restoring dentist has been discussed and noted in the chart, and the core is immediately placed after the endo is completed. The patient now has a stable, secure, endodontically treated tooth that can be permanently restored. This is especially important patients who have periapical radiolucent findings where we need to confirm healing or with patients who insist on using their insurance benefits to restore the tooth and who may need to wait six months or more to allow them to do this. The days of the cotton cavit IRM temporary endodontic closure are over. 
Our anodonic obligations do not end with the placement of gutta percha in the canals. Coronal seal is part of the coronal apical continuum and should be addressed at the time of annual treatment in as thorough a manner as possible. Regardless of how you ask your endodontist to finish your case for you, the tooth can only be successfully rehabilitated if both the apical and coronal seal are managed and respected. The person performing the endodontic treatment needs to work together with the restoring dentist to ensure a prompt and effective seal for the best clinical results. Remember, when we do the right thing, we both get better. Patients and clinicians. Thank you for listening to this broadcast. I look forward to having you join me again on our next time when we go Beyond the Terminus.